Aidan Arnold, local historian, talks about an illustrious family dynasty that ruled most of North County Dublin and beyond. And now he will tell us who that family was. The Barnwell family. The tomb of Sir Christopher Barnwell and his wife Marion Shaw could do with a facelift. Or to be more precise, Christopher could do with a nose job. The grey Italian marble which shaped his features since 1589 was worn away while it stood under the steps of the pulpit in Lusk until 1829 when it was moved to its present site. The ministers of the time wore down the nose of the effigy by walking across a plank which rubbed against it. Besides that unusual in- injury, the tomb is remarkably well preserved and has been described as one of the finest medieval tombs in Western Europe. Sir Christopher Barnwell is represented in a suit of armour, his hands joined and his feet resting on the body of a greyhound. His wife, Marion Shaw, is lying beside them, her hands across her breasts, her head resting on an embroidered pillow. She outlived Christopher and was the great-grandmother of St Oliver Plunkett by her second marriage to Sir Lucas Dillon. The Barnwalls originally came from a little village in Normandy called Berneval, just north of Dieppe. Sir Reginald Barnwall, currently head of the clan, visited Lusk in 1995 on his way to a family reunion which celebrated the thousandth anniversary of leaving that area. They were one of the most distinguished Anglo-Norman families ever to live in Fingal. Dalton's History of County Dublin gives an account of them which dates back to William the Conqueror in 1066, when Le Sieur de Barnville was recorded as having been a knight in his service. Throughout the centuries, the family was active in military service, sometimes defending the crown to be rewarded by royal donations of large tracts of land, sometimes opposing the crown in the defence of Irish interests and having their lands confiscated for their efforts. The first of the Barnwells to come to Ireland established themselves in Beerhaven, but were at length by conspiracy of the Irish headed by the O'Sullivans, all slain except one young man who then studied the common laws in England. This young man, Hugh, alias Ultran de Barneville eventually returned and was granted lands in Drimna and Terenur. The family grew in power and stature for their achievements and their achievements grew with each succeeding generation. Members of the Barnwell family were regularly elected to Parliament for both Mead and Dublin. Other positions which they held included Treasurer of Ireland, Lord High Chancellor, Solicitor General, Master of the Rolls, Attorney General, Second Baron of the Exchequer in England, Chief Justice of the King's Bench and Sheriff of County Mead. According to the Reverend Robert Walsh, written in 1802, these Barnwells owed everything they possessed to Reformation kings. They received immense tracts of Fingal on the suppression of the monasteries. This comment, somewhat biased, coming from the Protestant rector of Malahide, was basically true. Patrick Barnwell of Fieldstown was granted no fewer than 17 townlands in Fingal in 1541 including the monastery of Grace Jew and its adjoining lands. The convent was suppressed in 1539. They would seem to have been not the least bit bashful in acquiring property in this way. Patrick Barnwell had moved in and taken up residence at Grace Jew at least a year before it was granted to him. The Protestant Archbishop of Dublin, the Reverend George Brown, had to suffer the indignity of not being granted the convent despite pleading for it shamelessly. He wrote to Thomas Cromwell, Lord Great Chamberlain, I make my moan, having no other refuge, beseeching your lordship that if the Abbey of Grace Jew is suppressed, I may have it in farm, for it lieth even within the midst of my lands. His moan fell on deaf ears. Barnwell's occupied the convent of Grace Jew, while the nuns moved to a house of theirs in Portran, and they managed to escape confiscation. 
1565, the priory was demolished and the stones were used to build the new mansion on Torvey House. One member of the family who may have taken a dim view of this was Margaret Barnwell, a nun who was famous for her good works both in Ireland and on the continent. According to one account, she was a virgin of noble birth, but more noble by virtue, who dedicated her virginity to God from 13 years of age. Christopher Barnwell, who was earlier mentioned is buried in Lusk, was a very prominent member of the family. He was leader of the parliament in 1563. Dalton's account described him as true as steel, close and secret, fast to his friends, stout in a good quarrel, a great householder, sparing without pinching, spending without wasting, of nature mild, rather choosing to pleasure where he might harm than willing to harm where he might pleasure. He died in 1575. Despite the generosity of the English royal family, Barnwells remained Catholic and it would appear that they were firm opponents of laws enacted against their fellow Catholics. So much so that by 1605, Sir Patrick Barnwell was arrested and sent to the Tower of London because of his very public pro-Irish leanings. A curious incident, which may not be unrelated, was recorded about a daughter of the same Sir Patrick in the following year, 1606. As was often the custom, she had been entered into a pre-arranged marriage agreement while still a minor with a certain Valerian Wellesley. Apparently Wellesley was not very happy with the arrangement. When he reached the age of 14, he took the unusual step of protesting to the Court of Exchequer that he was fully resolved in my own mind to keep myself at liberty until God shall grant me best judgment to make choice for myself. The early 1600s were a very unsettled period in Ireland, culminating in the rising of 1641. Nicholas Barnwell was then resident in Torvey House, whether as a test of his loyalty to the Crown or as a mistaken belief in his loyalty, he was given a government com commission prior to the Rising to enforce martial law against anyone deemed to be disloyal and malignant uh, within Ireland who traitorously conspired against His Majesty. He was empowered to raise a force which was entitled to resist, kill and slay all traitors according to his discretion, to proceed against them by martial law, by hanging them, and to waste and spoil their castles, or otherwise to receive their submission. Rather than carry out this license to kill his friends and his neighbours, Nicholas quietly slipped out of Torvey Mansion and fled to Wales. He returned in 1643 and was soon appointed as Baron of Torvey and Viscount Barnwall of Kingsland. As part of the 1641 Rising, Luke Netterville from Dunabate raised an army of 1,200 men. Among those involved was Richard Barnwell of Crickstown. The authorities were not too discerning of which members of the family had been involved. When Patrick Barnwell of Kilbrew, a venerable old man, a lover of quiet and highly respected in his country, surrendered to the Earl of Ormond, he was imprisoned in Dublin Castle and stretched on the rack. Later he was released and his estates protected from further attack because of the severity of his treatment. In 1649, Oliver Cromwell arrived in Ireland and proceeded to mete out his Puritan version of justice to what he perceived as the traitorous Irish. Matthias Barnwell, 8th Baron of Torvey, was outlawed and banished to Connacht, although he hadn't even been involved in the Rising at all. Sir Richard Barnwell of Crickstown was also banished to Connacht and all his estates were taken from him. Some of the Barnwells took the side of King James against William of Orange. Nicholas Barnwell, the third Viscount Kingsland, was outlawed for his stance, but managed to get this judgment reversed. Subsequently, he took an oath of allegiance, but when asked to declare it according to English law, he refused, announcing that it went against his conscience. 
According to Dalton, the consequences of his refusal was that he could not sit in that house upon which his lordship withdrew. The Barnwall estates were confiscated in 1691. Matthew and Matthias Barnwell joined the Irish Regiment and went to France. Matthew was killed in action, but Matthias later returned and recovered the family property in Turvey. There is a long list of further military involvements by members of this colourful and very political family. They served in France, Spain, Germany, Montrose and many other places. In 1795, John Thomas Barnwell of Trimlestown succeeded in reversing the outlaw judgments which affected the family line. Hugh O'Neill and Mabel Bagnell The name William Warren is not one which you are likely to encounter in the standard Irish history book. Nobody of that name ever laid claim to glorious posterity. No streets were ever named after him. He never made it into the lines of a poem or a song. But sometimes it's enough to be in the right place at the right time, or to know somebody else who might be famous. That's how a William Warren played a small but significant role in the history of Lusk. He's remembered for his part in an incident which occurred at the former Turvey House, now known as Turvey Golf Club. In 1591, it was there that Hugh O'Neill, Earl of Tyrone and famous Irish rebel, absconded with his wife-to-be and rode to Drumcondra where they married before anyone could stop them. Hugh O'Neill was a frequent visitor to Dublin as a member of Queen Elizabeth's council there. Although he had been brought up at the royal court in England and on first name terms with members of the royal family, nevertheless he harboured secret nationalist leanings. One man who distrusted him intensely and who eventually was to die on the field of battle against him was Henry Bagnell. The two men clashed regularly in the council chamber in Dublin Castle. Bagnell was convinced, rightly in the end, that O'Neill was a traitor to the crown to which he swore allegiance. When Hugh O'Neill met and fell in love with Bagnell's sister, Mabel, it was more than Bagnell could stand. He refused to allow the marriage and he moved Mabel for safekeeping to Turvey House where another sister of his was married to Patrick Barnwell. The Barnwells were a wealthy Anglo-Norman family but unfortunately for Henry they too had nationalist sympathies and were quite friendly with Hugh O'Neill. On the evening of the 3rd of August 1591 Patrick Barnwell held one of his regular dinner parties with Hugh O'Neill as one of the guests. While O'Neill was regaling all and sundry with his tales of the English court, Mabel quietly got up from the table and left the room. O'Neill apparently took no notice, which surprised some of the more observant ladies on the evening as rumours of the love affair were one of the main topics of conversation at the time. What they did not discover until later in the evening was that our aforementioned Mr. William Warren, another friend of Hugh O'Neill, was waiting outside under the stars, a safe distance from the house, with a horse saddled and waiting. Mabel slipped out of the house unnoticed, proving the old adage that love laughs at locksmiths. William Warren mounted the horse and with the help of a second man whose name history has forgotten, Mabel was lifted into the saddle behind him. Like thieves in the night, they galloped off towards Drumcondra. Inside Turvey House, Hugh O'Neill kept the party going and attention diverted long enough to give the pair a good head start. Then in a quiet moment, he slipped out himself and galloped off after them. By the time the alarm was raised, it was too late, but it was said that Patrick Barnwell and a group of riders had gone in pursuit so as to be able to tell Henry Bagnell how they had tried to guard his sister uh, rather than actually catch the two elopers. Whatever the truth behind the pursuit, it was all of to no avail. Hugh and Mabel got married in Drumcondra before anyone could reach the scene with authority to hold the bands. Subsequently, Bagnell did everything in his power to have the marriage annulled, but all his efforts failed. That's it.